Hey, what's up? Lately, we've been talking about files. And today I want to talk about the coolest way to read and write files that nobody knows about. In my recent videos, I've talked about files. I've talked about open and F open and basically how we read and write files. I also recently made a video talking about how processes get memory from the operating system using MMAP. And today I wanna to bring those two ideas together and talk about memory mapped files and memory mapped file IO. But first off, let's talk a little bit about virtual memory. Your computer has RAM, it probably has four, eight, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And the programs you run are requesting some of that RAM. They're asking for it. And at some point, your processes are going to ask for more memory than your machine has. Depending on how you use your machine, this may happen more often than you think. And what happens when you run out of memory? Well, you might expect it to be catastrophic. You might expect processes to be killed. You might expect the operating system to crash. You might expect the machine to just hang and stop. The reality is that's not what happens and that's because of virtual memory. Because what your operating system does, the memory manager actually takes some of that memory that's in RAM and copies it out to the swap space on your hard drive. It copies the memory you don't need right now out to your hard drive and then it brings it back in when you need it. And this has to be done really carefully because disk accesses are much slower than RAM accesses. And so your operating system's memory manager gets really good at moving data back and forth between RAM and disk. And that's really the core thing you gotta keep in mind. And we're gonna use that mechanism to read from and write to files on the disk. And to do that, we're gonna use MMAP. You'll remember from my previous MMAP video that we used MMAP to request blocks of memory. Now we're going to use MMAP to request blocks of memory. We just want those blocks of memory to be filled with the data from our file. So let's take a look at what this looks like in an example. So to do this, I need a file descriptor. This can either come from open or I can use fopen and then use file node to get the file descriptor from it. And I need to know the size of the file. And then I'm gonna call mmap. I tell it that I wanna block the size of my file and I wanna read from it. And I want it to be private, meaning that it's just visible to the process. But then different from last time, we pass in the file descriptor for our open file and a zero. And the zero just means that I want it to start at the beginning of the file. If I only wanted to map part of the file, let's say like I wanted to offset into the file, I could do that too by just specifying a different offset. Now mmap is gonna return a pointer to a block of memory, which is just like before, it's just a big array of bytes. And my file's contents are gonna be in that array. So that's it, no f gets c, no f gets, no f scan f, f read, none of that. It just one mmap call and my whole file's in memory. And now I can go through that array and print out every character just like I did before. And just so you know I'm serious, let's compile and run it and there you have it. File contents all printed out. So that's reading, what about writing? Well, one cool thing we can do here is to update the file in place, all in memory. So now instead of just reading the file, let's change the file. Now we'll need to, we'll need to add write privileges to our mmap call. We also need to open for reading and writing, and we need to change map private in our mmap call to map shared. This last change might not be super obvious. Without it, the changes that we make to the memory map will not be shared with the rest of the system. In other words, they're not actually gonna be written back to the file. And now rather than just printing things out, let's change things. Let's say I want to capitalize every other letter in the text. I just update the characters in memory. Now when I run the program and we look at the contents of the file, there you go, you can see the changes that are they're in my file. The changes that I made in memory, they got mapped back. So that's how you use mmap to map files into memory and, and use it for reading and writing purposes. And this is really convenient, but it's also really efficient. Remember what I said before about the virtual memory system being really good at moving things back and forth between RAM and disk? Well, that's what we're doing. We're basically using that mechanism. So let me show you one last example just to show this. So I've made two versions of, of the same program. Basically, this is, this is just a test program. It's a benchmark. It just opens a file and then reads 5,000 random characters anywhere in the file. So it's using RAND to basically jump around and one version uses mmap and the other version is using fopen and fseek basically to just seek around this file. And then they're just gonna print out the characters that they read. And what I wanna look at is how fast each of these work. And you'll notice that the mmap version is about twice as fast as the version that uses fseek. So there you have it folks, a new way to read and write files that uses the virtual memory system of your operating system to efficiently move data from disk into RAM and back again. And it can be a really convenient way to program for certain kinds of scenarios. I definitely think it's a useful tool that you should put to use and I hope this is useful in your next project. And until next time, I'll see you later.